to be honest, um, my heart still says that mountain biking is more fun. <laughs> um, uh, but I, I, I've had a lot of like good times riding on the road, uh, you know, with the national team or with the Australian team when I was there as well. All right, today we are here with uh, one of the national cyclists, apart from Boon Kek that I've interviewed and Riyadh with mm. God, Arfan. Yes. Thank you for coming. Uh, very hard to get a national cyclist because you guys are very busy training. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but maybe tell us about, a bit about yourself, uh, who, those who are not in Singapore. Well, so my name is Arfan. Um, I'm currently a student in NUS. And I'm also, you know, like a, I'm more like a, full-time athlete, part-time student kind of situation, but in reality, I am a full-time student. Um, um, I guess I've, I guess if you talk about like my cycling journey itself, like I've been riding for quite a while. To be honest, I started riding when I was, I started cycling when I was three, um, because as a, ch as a kid, like as, as a baby, I was actually kind of fat. <laughs> and yeah, and uh, my, it, it was to the extent that we went, like my parents had to send me to the doctors because I was literally fainting as I was crying. And um, and the doctor said, look, like you gotta put him on a diet. Like, can you imagine, like a two-year-old kid, like you have to put him on a diet, <laughs> and or or and like to lose weight. Or at six years old, I would have to go for a surgery. Mm. So my parents did the most logical thing and sent me on a diet. And and at the time, my dad started ride, riding already. Yeah, like just casually, you know. And and they just got me into riding. Wow. Yeah. And now a national cyclist. Do yeah. you ever do you ever think of yourself as being a national cyclist? Like, do you even think of like? I'm going to do this and make money out of it. <laughs> well, to be honest, I, uh, that was actually one of my goals from the start. If I'm being honest, um, I think I remember, I remember like, I think when I was 15 or 16, my, and I was going through like, you know, or, or, you know, when like at that age, you're kind of trying to figure out what exactly you want to do and stuff like that. And I've been riding for quite a while because I was racing a lot of kids races at the time. Sorry, maybe maybe this was fourteen, and then my I remember my dad and my, my parents telling me like, look, like you've always said that you wanted to be like a cyclist, you know, and I was like, really? I, d I mean, I didn't think about it, but then when, when I thought about it, yeah, like I have, you know, and I mean, and now like you know, I'm I'm, you know, I'm riding in the national team and everything, and and going for races overseas, all over like the world sometimes, and it's like it's just a really good experience. Yeah, guess. it's amazing, man. I guess every one of us want to do this for a living, but uh. Oh. It's, it's uh, not possible unless you are one of the creme de la creme. So uh, you said, uh, obviously, you started very young. Yep. and then uh, But when, when did like, road cycling became a thing like, for you? Like, you know, I'm, I'm going to take this seriously. So actually, I'm, um, I'm a mountain biker at heart. So uh, only starting in 2021, as I changed from a mountain bike team to metro racing, which Metro Racing is more of a road, uh, road team, but they just have a really good mountain bike team. So that's when they decided to move and, and you know, they, they got me into road riding. And, and from then on, I realized, hey, like, you know, my road riding isn't too bad, I think. And then after that, I, it kind of progressed from there where last year I had the opportunity to, to go uh, to join an Australian, Australian team, which is uh, ARA Pro Racing Sunshine Coast. And um, that was essentially the, the catalyst for me to say, hey, like, maybe I want to try and focus more on the road. And, you know, like, like I still try to ride mountain bike as much as I can, but definitely it's still a bit on the, on the back burner right now. Mm. Yeah. Do you think you would have made it into mountain biking? Like, Riyadh, Riyadh does mountain mm. biking more than road biking, right? Like, mm. he, he represents the country for mountain biking. Heard a lot about you through my Instagram. <laughs> People have been telling me you are like a pro. We were just talking uh, before we shot that yeah. you represent Singapore. Yeah, yeah. So I represent Singapore in uh, a few di disciplines of cycling, mountain biking and road cycling in uh, yeah, both those two, those two disciplines. Uh. So but mountain biking is your primary? Yeah, so mountain biking is my primary. I do like cross-country mountain biking. Uh, that's where I start my whole cycling thing actually. Yeah. Oh. Like, it, like competitively, mm. but like... Um, at the start, I just, I just ride my mountain bike for fun, you know, I, I started with my dad. He was the one who started mountain biking first. And then after that, he asked me if I wanted to join. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, I joined him on the weekend rides. And then uh, I started to get addicted from there. Lah. You know, every, every single weekend, I look forward to riding my mountain bike in the trails and all. Yeah. What was the pivoting point like from mountain biking to road biking? Why didn't you just stick to mountain biking and just go pro there? I mean, I think the opportunity, you know, like... Um like, the ARA opportunity was more of a road opportunity. And to be honest, like, Riyadh and I actually started out together. 
like when we were when I was 17 and he was 19 in the same team and um so definitely, like I, I was to be honest, I was anti road bike for a while. <laughs> like, if I'm being really honest, so it's a bit tall for me to say right now. Like, I'm a roadie, you know. But, um, but yeah, like I at the start, I was fully into mountain bike and fully focused on it. But over time, you know, mountain bike is really, if I'm being honest, mountain bike is really, really difficult. Like, simply because um, mountain bike is extremely, extremely individual. And you need to be a really full package. Like, you need to have the fitness, the skills, the mentality. You have to be the star of every show, you know? And, um, and, and if you look at the, in, a, in a world perspective as well, like, there's a lot less opportunities for mountain bike. Um, if you see now, you know, example, Tom Pickcock or, like, Matty Van Der Poel or, like, Milan Vardas and stuff like that, who's in, who's in you, you move his mind if I'm not wrong. Like, they're, they're starting to go to the road side and say, hey, like, I'm also a really good mountain biker. Can I race on a mountain bike? And that's what they do, you know. And just because, like, mountain bike, like, the road has such a, a, a lot bigger budget. But um, I guess, again, like, if I go back to why I decided to pursue road cycling more now, it's because, it's simply because, like, you know, I was just given a, a wonderful opportunity to, to uh, race overseas in Australia, and, and I decided to take it. And, I mean, it's not too bad. Like, I actually realized, hey, look, like, road racing is actually really fun. There's a lot... There's a lot to discover about it, and a lot, sorry, a lot that I have dis- that I have discovered. Mm. Like there's a lot of nuances to it. Like, to be honest, um, my heart still says that mountain biking is more fun. <laughs> um, uh, but I, I, I've had a lot of like good times riding on the road. Uh, you know, with the national team or with the Australian team when I was there as well. Yeah. So you said you were given the opportunity with ARA. Yep. Uh, you joined Matador. So Matador is a local club in Singapore. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my buddy, John Ritchie, shout out to him. Uh, since the day I started YouTube, I've been trying to get him on, but he's not coming on. Uh, okay, yeah, so... Okay, uh, I'll invite him next time. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Matador... Uh, so do you, <coughs> would you say that those who probably want to... Uh, dip their toes into probably racing or trying their luck into getting a bit more pro, they should join a local legit club that can give them access. Is that how you did it? Yes. Honestly, there are a lot of really good road teams in Singapore. Um, you know, you got Matador, you got Mavericks, Allied World, you got even Garcia. Like Garcia like is a is a is a team that really focuses more on the the juniors and, and the development, especially for road riders. And I really, really like that project, you know. Like the 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 uh, management is really supportive of the 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 cycling scene, and they have I think wow, I think they have like 40, 40 kids or something under them. Like it's crazy, and and honestly, like every time I look at them, I'm always thinking like hats off, you know. Like it's it's a really big feat to do that, and a big budget to be honest, because you know they're giving like they have their own bike brand, which is Garcia, and um, they they you know sometimes they give some of them bikes kid and they sponsor them they i think recently they went to like perth or something but i mean going back to it like um an example like there are a lot of good teams in singapore that you should join because i think aside from just um the racing it's just a good environment to be in like any road team that actually decides to race because they always they're usually quite uh, driven towards a certain motive so you will see them like rock up to to all the the faster rides you know like ccb5 or maybe Maybe they have their own rights in itself. Hmm. Um, and yeah, like, I think you can learn a lot. Yeah. I, especially if you're Singaporean. If you're Singaporean as well, like, there is the national route. There's, you know, there's a uh, national development squad and stuff like that who, who always has trials every year. So you will be able to join that. You can ride a bus hmm. and everything. And, and you can learn a lot from there. Right. So it's like an all year round recruitment process, trying to look for the best talent here. Uh, for the NDS or for the, the teams? The teams. I, yeah, so I wouldn't call it recruitment per se. I think some of them do sort of recruit. I think they just kind of casually say like, hey, if you want to join a team, we are available. Mm. Um, I mean, as with everyone, you know, like I think as you start hanging out with people, people just ask if you want a, uh, want a, want a different environment or whatever. But, but um, uh, a lot of the times they, they are quite open or they're very open actually to, to new people joining. Like example for Metro, like we have rides every Saturday. And I swear, almost every Saturday there's a new face. Hmm. It's like, oh, who, who, are, uh, like, where, who are you from? Or oh, is this guy's plus one? Is that guy's plus one? And and you see, like, hey, you're not bad. And then you know, three weeks later, four weeks later, 
five five rides and everything and then you say oh you have a metro jersey now that's awesome <laughs> you know like so uh, the, the yeah. metro jersey has to be earned of course of I course i can't just buy it <laughs> no 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 of course not man they got a they got a ride with us you got a uh, you know we got a vibe we got a uh, gel with the team and 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 i'm i'm glad that they do that you know cuz in a team it's it's very important if everyone Vibes with one another, gels with one another, because that's very important in racing. Mm. Okay, so coming back to ARA cycling, uh, yeah. how uh, which will come about to the bike because this is the team color for that team. Uh, how did ARA uh, approach you? What was the process for you getting into that club? How did they notice you, and how long did you stay there? And then how did you progress from there on? So, um, the opportunity actually came about via the national team. So in twenty twenty one. I was relatively unknown in the road scene, but I don't know how. Maybe I was just on a really good day, but I managed to win the 2021 Under 23 ITT National Champs, and I think that kind of put me to, to get more attention um, from the national team for the road side as well. Because before that, I was always I've been always in the, the mountain bike national team, you know. Um, and then eventually, towards the the latter half of the year, uh, Shane Bannon and and some of the the other SCF management called me and they said, "Hey, like we have this opportunity in Australia to to train and race." And and immediately I jumped on it, you know, like because I was like, "When else do you get this kind of opportunity?" And um, honestly, it's the brainchild of of Shane um, when when he came to SCF and he said, "I look like this this program that I can get you guys on." And, like two of us were, were on it and like me and uh, Darren Lim was another national rider. And um, yeah, uh, I mean, we stayed there for around, or I stayed there for around three months, two, three months because um, uh, we were prepping for last year's SEA Games and like we just went back and I was essentially last year, like especially the first half of the year, I was, I was all over the place. Like I, I went to Australia, then I think I went back for one week, and then I went to Thailand, and then I got back, and then after that, like it was the whole thing in spirit and everything. Mm. Like, so it's quite busy. Okay. Wow. Sounds like a very tiring journey, <laughs> but worth okay. it. Uh, let's go into the bike. Uh, sure. As a national cyclist, I have to say I've interviewed quite a number of people with very exotic and expensive bikes, just like Bunkia. Wow. Boon cat. Are we, are, we, are we ready to roll, by the way? We are ready to roll. Are ready to roll? Okay, are I'm we just... live? Yeah, we are pretty okay, much man. Live. So, wow, to everyone who's watching I'm and... Uh, yeah, subscribe, yeah. by the way. Yeah, subscribe, <laughs> definitely, yeah. Uh, we've got Boon Kian, who is a national cyclist uh, for Singapore. By the way, when he came into the room, the studio... Dude, I don't know if the camera can pick up, right? But <laughs> this guy is the hulk of cycling, man. His veins is just popping up all the way. But anyway, thank you so much for coming. No worries, my pleasure. Okay. A 5440 chain ring. Um, handlebars are black ink. Uh, 42, 130 stem. Uh, factor also frame, obviously. This bike is uh, pretty... Uh, okay. I, would, I wouldn't say one of the very expensive bikes, but it does what it's supposed to do. Uh, tell us, what is this bike? The color and what's the setup? Well, um, it's a Factor O2, you know, um, it's, uh, I guess, not necessarily the highest end, but it's still pretty good. If I'm being honest, this is the best bike I've ever had. Um, so, I think the setup is, I got a SRAM red crank setup with a SRAM force derailleur. Um, I'm on Wheel Angel wheels. Um, I'm on Wahoo. Um, other than that, it's nothing too crazy to be honest. It's it's a, it's a pretty stock bike. If you buy it, like say if you buy it from from Factor itself, it's it's essentially what you see is what you get. And I, when you came in, I said, uh, "Did you repaint this? Why is it in this yellow color? Because I don't think you can get this color off the shelf." Yeah, so um, I guess you could call it almost like a custom color, you know, because uh, it's it's actually the AR, uh, ARA's 2022 team color, which is this really nice yellow. Mm. Um, and uh, as I as my contract finished uh, when I was entering this year 2023, I decided to hey I really like this color like why not I just buy it and you know it's 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 uh, I think it's gonna be stuck with me for a while. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, you are what what's your height and what's the size of the bike? I am one six eight. Okay, and I think the bike is a fifty two. 
52 uh, yeah. which is like I a think, medium no 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 I no? think it's like an S or something S yeah. <laughs> okay so uh, question is did you get bike fitted um, of course when you're in a pros usually people there get very professionally fitted mm. and they get the best of the best parts uh, did you go for a bike fit or did you tinker everything by yourself a bit of both I um, so my, my coach uh, Wei Liang from uh, Podium Performance he also dabbles in, in some uh, bike fitting as well but his style is very much of a collaborative style uh, so I go there and he sets me up on a on a on a good track uh, in terms of you know proper position and everything else. But you know with aero and everything, there's a lot of tinkering to it. So I I I con- I, I say hey you know why don't we do this like you know maybe extend this a bit more or, or, or try and do this and do that. And then he he says okay yeah I think that's a good idea and we adjust adjust and right now I think it's in a pretty decent uh, position. I think to be honest I I might go back to the drawing board again. Because, uh, I mean, bike fit is almost like a never-ending process, you know. And uh, try and optimize it even more to get even more power and even be more aero as, possi- as possible. Because, you know, everyone has different body sizes and, and body fits, right? And mm. I just want to be the best as I can. And when you say that bike fit is a never-ending process, I have to agree. Because uh, this last week when I was out riding my f- and I was just adjusting the fore and aft position of my saddle, my friend uh, commented, you are never ending, you know, always adjusting here and there. I'm like, yeah, I, I <laughs> you know, after I don't ride for a very long time and then, you know, I, I'm like just changing the, the height of the, the seat posts and stuff. So I guess. I, yeah. Okay. I think that kind of makes sense as well. Cause like, as you ride more, you're like a bit more flexible. So that's when, uh, so when you come back on, right, you're a bit unflexible. So everything just feels kind of weird. Mm, right? mm. So that's why it, it, it takes a while. But then, I mean, currently like, everything's comfortable um, but I'll, I'll just like to be a bit more aero yeah. you know because you can you can always be trying to be more aero like you know maybe even like change the handlebar maybe go a bit narrower or, mm. or whatever what what bar and stem combo is this? I think it's both zip it's a zip service course uh, stem with a 38mm uh, handlebar I think it's just like a regular handlebar like nothing too okay. crazy yeah you, you've given me the description so people who are watching everything is in the video description you can go and just check it out uh, and you said this is so far the best bike you've ridden yeah uh, what bikes have you ridden before this so in terms of road bikes I've had, my first ever one was a Schwinn like this was when I was like nine or something I have no idea you like, still remember the bike brand yeah yeah <laughs> of course uh yeah, I think my dad got it from me or something, from his friend. It was, uh, I can't remember the model, but I remember it was a shoe and it was blue colour, sparkly. Uh, I think maybe set up for uh, extravagant colours over the years. Uh. Yeah. And then eventually I changed to a Bataglin bike, which is my dad's bike, um, which was actually kind of nice. It, it had like really classic tubing and stuff. Um, uh, eventually I changed to a Trek as I started to get sponsored. Because um, uh, in 2017 to 2019, um, our team was sponsored by uh, Trek, Trek Technology 3. Uh, so I, I, I got a bike from them. Was it Madone? No, it was, it, it, was, it was an old Madone. Old Madone. Yeah, it was actually kind of nice. Yeah. Uh, I think it was a Madone 6 or something. I can't mm. remember. And then um, I cha- like in 2020, I changed to a Ridley Noah. And that was a... That, uh, and that was a bike that in 2021 I actually used for the ITT and I, and I won it. Um, and then after that, after that really Noah, which was at the time my best bike ever. And bear in mind, like, that was like no power meter, like mm. Altigra kind of, uh, I, it was my first ever aero wheels. And uh, then I changed to this bike mm. with you know, electronic shifting, deep section wheels, power meter, like yeah. coming from, like, I guess like, you know, humble roots, Hey, this is well. I I was so happy. And it's a climbing bike. It's not even an aero bike. Yeah. Uh, so climbing or aero, you had the Noah, and this is a yeah. Noah's a aero bike. So, okay. Realistically speaking, the Noah would be a bit faster. Uh, but I think that in terms of the how nimble this bike is, I think it kind of makes up for it. Mm. Uh, Cause I I I I like to say I'm a bit uh, technically savvy. So I, I like to maneuver around a bunch and stuff like that. So, you know, having this bike with a fast acceleration and stuff like that, it, it really doesn't hurt. Of course I would I would love to have a I would love to have a aero frame which may or may not be in the works soon. <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Um uh but but yeah, like 
uh, so far, like, I've really enjoyed the bike. Like, when I was contemplating whether or not to get the bike, I obviously was trying to go in my head and say, look, maybe we can get an arrow frame and everything like that. But honestly, the bike is really nice. Um, obviously, you talk about aero and stuff, like, you would, that, you would keep that in mind. But yeah. in terms of the feel, the comfort, or when we're climbing, really, really good. Okay. And the reason for a... Uh, wow, you said there's a SRAM RAID in front and then behind is a SRAM FORCE. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what, what's up, man, with a RAID FORCE combo? And uh, tell us about the chain ring size and the cassette. To be honest, I, I don't know what's up with it. It was a, it was a parts that I, that I got with the, <laughs> the bike, to be honest. Maybe it's like, you know, they were just trying to like, cut costs or whatever. Mm. Or, but I think they wanted this because it was the only power meter uh, that was available for SRAM. In terms of like that, what that one piece. Obviously, now we have the the, the new SRAM Force, which looks amazing, full black. Um, but yeah, this is what I got, and then with the SRAM Force and everything. And I think it's a fifty, what is it, fifty thirty seven? Because mm. uh, I think we got it direct from the dealer, so we were able to get that fifty. And then I think the rear is a ten thirty, what was it thirty six or something? Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, bike weight. I don't know. <laughs> I eight point something. Okay. Yeah. We'll find out. Uh, sure. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since I measured it. Yeah. Then. And uh, Wheel Angels. Are you sponsored by them? Yes, indeed. I am sponsored by Wheel Angels. Yeah. Uh, performance of Wheel Angels. Wheel Angels are a Singaporean brand, by the way, for yes. people who are outside of Singapore. Yeah. Wheel Angels are a Singapore brand. Um, really good. I I really like the the wheels. Uh, especially for like these sixties. Wow, they're so fast. What hubs are these? Are they their own in-house hubs? No. So these are the white industry hubs. Um, and they were provided to me specifically for the SEA Games. Mm. So you can see from this this logo, I think. Oh, yeah. Cambodia. Yeah, we'll talk about that. I know. No, yeah. Actually, let's talk about that now. Oh, yeah, uh, sure. Cambodia 2023. Uh, mm. How was your placing? How do you prep for it? Uh, what, was the, what was the feeling about that? Mm. Um, honestly, prep was okay. Uh, there were a bit of hiccups and stuff. I... I after tour of Thailand, uh, which I went with Boon. Or was it after or before? Uh, okay, I can't remember. But basically, like uh, I there were a lot of hiccups during that whole period, like that whole one and a half kind of two months before Sea Games, because I I actually had to go for surgery because I I fell when I, when we were in Chiang Mai and then um. The, my, my wound actually got an infection. Long story. But uh, eventually... Let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about that. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's right in front of my face right now. Yes, I'm going like to ask right you here, about like, that. It's like, like some keloids going on. I have some here as well. Dude, I have so yeah, many. Yeah. I have like some <laughs> on my leg, on my arm. Like, you name it, man. Yeah. What uh, happened? So basically, we were, we were riding in a motor pace when we were in Chiang Mai uh, for our Chiang Mai training camp, which is a really good training camp, by the way. Then... Um, uh, I think this was literally the last day because I was going to race mountain bike with Riyadh. The, that day we were going to leave. And then um, we were, the girls were motor pacing in front of us. And I don't know what happened exactly, but there was a crash and I was just behind. I was just behind the girls and there was a pileup. Um, fortunately, I came out relatively unscathed. I don't know how I managed to sort of save it, but the only wound I got was this. Like this on my arm somewhere here. Mm. I have a photo of it, but yeah. I don't know if you want to show it. I like. might get demonetized for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can blur it out or something, yeah. you know? Okay. And, and how bad was it? Was it just like a road rash or... So yeah, cut? so that's the thing. It was kind of just like a road rash. Okay. Um, uh, but so I, was, I, I didn't think too much of it. Which is... The funny thing was is that uh, I, it was fine. And at, at the time, I just used like tag them to cover it up. And I, and I went about my day, just went about my week, just go race mountain bike. But funny thing was that two or three days later... During my mountain bike practice, I actually went over the bars and I crashed and I sprained my right wrist really badly. Mm. Um, for, and, and I thought that it was fractured, you know, like to that point because it, it was contorted in a weird angle. Um, but then eventually, two days later, I did manage to race, but I was, I was racing like full bandaged up. Like it was, it was insane. Like, because I, I, I was in the mentality like, look, I'm here already. Like if I can race, like why not? I did not do well at all. Mm. Um, I was begging to be pulled out at that point because my wrist was so sore. Yeah. Um, but but yeah. So basically, what happened after that was that I raced and everything. I think and I think the wound just got a bit too dirty. And um, I think when I was tired or whatever, I I made a mistake and I didn't change the dressing properly. And then eventually, when I got back to Singapore, 
um, I started to notice like some dots. And I was like, oh, I was like, that's weird. And then eventually those dots got bigger. And I was like, okay, I went to the polyclinic. They gave me some cream. The cream did not work. But eventually what helped me was that um, I was looking for someone to ride with on the weekend. And then after that, I, I called up Boone. I said, hey, like, are you free to ride? And he was like, yeah, man, I'm free. Like, let's go for a ride. And then we rode, blah, blah, blah. He was r- wrecking me the whole way. And then after we stopped and we were just talking, and then he was like, hey, what's on your arm? They said, oh, I don't know, like it's some infection or something. And he said, look, that, that, that looks really bad, you know. And he said, you should go and get it checked out. And, and I trust him, you know, he's like a podiatrist, like, I mean, this guy knows his shit. Mm. <laughs> so <laughs> eventually that day itself, I, I went and I went to the A&E and, and the, they said it was kind of serious, but nothing too crazy. They said I did, uh, lucky I came in time. Um, but the issue was is that I went by the A&E so there were no open slots available because mine is a, considered like a non-emergency. So eventually what happened was that I had to stay in the, the hospital for four days. What was the issue? Like why was it such a... Uh... So basically it was just a growth. It was just a growth that was, that was kind of deep into my, into my elbow. And I think because it was in my elbow, they were not able to do uh, like a, a day surgery on it. Or sorry, like a... How to say it? Uh, Outpatient? No, yeah. Oh, no, the, one, the ones that I, I don't actually have to fall asleep. Mm. I can't remember what I call it right now. Um, but so basically when, when, when it was like that, they had to put me to sleep, right? And, and I had to have an appointment. And because, you know, it's an A&E, they're very busy. Um, I had to wait for a really long time for that. Yeah, but, but the surgery, I think they told me it took like 50 minutes or something. Nothing too crazy. Mm. So yeah, it was four, four day wait for uh, 50 minutes. Uh, surgery but it's okay <laughs> at least you got it checked out yes and yes. Uh, so we were talking about Cambodia so that was the SEA Games mm. uh, was it last month or two months ago last month yeah uh, how, how was that oh yeah good it was a really good experience unfortunately like I and you know the whole team didn't exactly get what we wanted um, obviously we, we were really working for Boon to, for him to try and get the win that um, we knew that he could get um uh, but I mean, on my end, I was I was feeling really good on that day. You know, I I think I did my best to get Boone into the position that you know in the breakaway and stuff. But uh, eventually, I was uh, in the 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 group toward the back, and I think we were on the fourth lap, going to the fifth lap, and it was raining. And the guy, like I think a guy from Vietnam, he just crashed in front of me. It just crashed in front of me, boom, slipped out. And I saved it, but I had to go onto the grass. And in between the grass and the road, there was actually a drain. So I couldn't exactly, like, it was, it was a drain that it was a bit too big for me to hop, out, hop onto the, the road back again. So because of that, I had to unclip, you know, cycle cross, jump over the, hmm. the, the drain and then run. And I was doing, I don't know, like 300 plus 400 watts. And I was trying to chase back the peloton, but, but oh man, I just couldn't latch back on. Um, I mean, I, th- I believe I finished the race, but... Uh, like I managed to cross the line after the, the six laps, but I, I don't know. The, the, the results don't really show. Mm. Not really sure what's up about that. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, regardless, it was a really good experience. Uh. It, I mean, I've been wanting to go to the Seagans for a really long time. So being there and, and racing with the national team and learning so much from like the likes of Boone and, and Calvin and everyone, honestly, like the management and stuff, like it was a really good experience. And, and uh, meeting the 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 international road guys and the international mountain bike guys that were still there that, that you know, I made friends with over the years and stuff. Like, it was a really good experience. How long do you guys have to train for a race like this? I know you guys are training all year round, but just specifically, you know that there is this SEA Games coming out. How mm. long in advance do you need to prep? Wow. And um, what kind of training do you guys do? Uh, you know, some, I, I, honestly, I think my... When I really started to focus on the SEA Games was starting end of last year at least. Obviously, like um, the whole year since last year's SEA Games, which I was reserved for, um, I was trying to work towards it. But you know, I have other races and stuff, and I had a small off season. So once I came out from the off season, my, my mentality was like, look, I want to go SEA Games and I want to do well. Um, but uh, in terms of the training wise, it depends, you know, like my schedule is, is one or two days of rest in a week. So Monday is my rest day. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I would usually do intervals uh, plus a bit of extra uh, if I can. 
Um, and then Friday is a bit of my free day. If I'm if I'm really um, if I'm if I'm really feeling it, I can I can take a rest. Um, but if not, I, I I try and go for like a mountain bike ride, which is what I'm doing nowadays. If I have school um, during the semester, then I will just ride to school. Hmm. And then Saturday, Sunday are my bigger rides. Like on Saturday, we have like a metro ride um, where I would do maybe like five hours, five plus hours. And then on Sundays, I usually like to go to our local uh, crazies, right? Um, and which is a really fun ride. And uh, um, I just like smash it out. And then after that, maybe do a bit of extra and, and get like, I don't know, four hours. So yeah, it's about like three hours on that. F- three hours for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then maybe Friday is about two hours, and then Saturday, Sunday is like five, four, something like that. You can't see behind my face, but I'm, I'm actually laughing because the amount of commitment <laughs> that this takes, and on top of that, you've got, you are in school. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, do you even have a social life? Do your friends, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to give up asking him out, you know, he's probably going to say no, he needs to go cycling tomorrow <laughs> morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, my, my friends have been really accommodative, uh, and also maybe I've been a bit, um, too lenient in my schedule as well. Like, you know, something's always got to go. So I might not, I may or may not be the best student. Um, but um, it's okay. And I try to balance as much as I can. Um, I, I'm trying to do as much as I can, you know, experience. Because, I mean, I know as everyone says that when you're studying, it's the best time to do whatever that you want. Because, <laughs> you know, when you start working and stuff like that, like, there's a lot more responsibility. There's, there's a lot more that you have to do. Um, so... Uh, yeah, so I, I, my schedule's a bit packed right now. <laughs> like, uh, I think during the school, I'm like, I, I'm also part of like an academic society. So, you know, we, we plan like events and then we have meetings and then I got schoolwork and then after that, I try to like hang out with my friends and then maybe like, if I can fit in like a one and a half hour lunch, like, oh man, I, I'm like so grateful and I, and I, and I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful for my friends who really try and accommodate to my, to my schedule. Like, Everyone has been very nice, mm. and you know they've been they've they've shown that they really want to spend time with me, and and I really appreciate it. These are true friends. Yeah. Any any shout out to those friends? <laughs> oh man, I mean I mean I think one of my one of my my really close friends is actually at Riyadh la. Like we go way back, so like shout out to him, hundred percent. Um, Shatibi, who's also like my my uni friends, and then like my two other friends like Jada and Yasmin, they 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 also like. Really real, um, and even like I, I guess I'll shout out my academic society as well, <laughs> like Malay Studies Society. Like, sure, man, let's go. Okay. Shout out to NUS, you know, for giving me an education. <laughs> this guy is not missing anyone. <laughs> my parents, my parents. <laughs> Your parents. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyone else? Are we good? <laughs> yeah, we're good, we're good, we're good. Okay, sorry. So back on Real Angels, we were just talking about that. We totally deviated. Oh my course. god. Yeah. Uh, okay, so these are sixty mm dips, uh, and sorry, the hubs are white industries mm. uh, reviews of Will Angels anything that's off or what's good about them I know you're sponsored <laughs> <laughs> hands are a bit tight <laughs> no like, I, I really enjoy the wheels I mean they, they're really good um, their service is good they, they're pretty nice guys and stuff like that so I really enjoy working with them I haven't really had too much of, a, of an issue with them obviously like at the start you know when, when the wheels are fresh they, it takes time to 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 get used to it, to embed, and I'll, I'll, I'll just feedback and say, hey, can we adjust this and adjust that? And they were really accommodating. Yeah. Uh, they, they tried to really, really help me to to do my best for SEA Games and, and have the best setup as I can. What's the optimum wheel depth? Let's say someone who is on aluminium wheels, uh, they want to upgrade to carbon, and they're like, oh my god, there are just so many different depths. Which one should I go for? And also, how important are hubs? Mm. Do you need expensive hubs or... You know, just any basic hubs will do. I think there's a, you know, a, like a rate of diminishing marginal return. Like, as the higher you go, the less um, uh, benefit you get, right? Um, uh, I think, example, if you go for like a, um, what do you call it? Uh, a decent a decent hub, like it's fine. Like nothing too crazy. Like a, what was it? The 350? Uh, yeah, the DT Swiss 350s, mm. I think those are fine. Mm. Like, I think if you have that, it's good enough. And personally, for for depth, 45, 50 is good. Like, I, 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 before this, I was using a 50, and I really, really enjoyed it. Like, on the uphills, fine. Flats, you really felt like you were, you were, you were arrow and stuff. So, like, I think in terms of a do-it-all, 45 to 50, mm. perfect for me. 
Uh, you got custom painted uh, logos as well. Uh, it, I mean, it's stickers, uh, but oh, they're stickers. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, they like Wheel Angel is loves to customize it to your bike. Right. To be honest, like can you just like, put your name on it or something? I think can. I think they <laughs> they they might help you. Out. I mean, look like if you go to like Pasakara in Johor, you can make like stickers like really <laughs> cheap. Like, I have another sticker at the top that my dad made as well. Like. Um, that 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 we made at at, at Pasakara, like it's his own design and everything. Oh, it's okay, nice. okay. And uh, clinches or tubeless? I am on clinches. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Why not tubeless? Um, <laughs> I don't know. To be honest, like I think tubeless are nice. Um, uh, I think like it just costs a bit more. And you know, I'm a I'm a broke student. Like, <laughs> like uh, like I I am sponsored by I am sponsored by Victoria Singapore. Mm. So they do give me tires. Um, but you know, like, I, I do try and, like, help out and stuff. And I think that it's just a bit less of a hassle. Even though that I have had, actually, a lot of experience with tubeless. Because in the mountain bike and everything. So, I have no problems, like, setting it up and everything and to manage it. But uh, it's just simple. Like, it's nothing too complicated. Uh, during a race, what's the... Hmm, any mechanical issues that you, are, you fondly remember? Mechanical issues that I fondly remember? Wow. Yeah. That you'll never forget and like <laughs> this could have been avoided. <laughs> wow. In the road or mountain bike? <laughs> uh, let's talk about road. On the road No, actually. Hmm. Think about it. I, oh my god, touch wood. Like like uh, my hey, this one's good. Oh yeah, wood. <laughs> <laughs> touch wood. Like my my road racing has been pretty peaceful. I think because it's less complicated, to be honest. There's, there's a lot less moving parts. Um, so you just got to make sure that, you know, your wheels are fine. You know, everything is checked. Like, you check your tension and, mm. and you know, like your oil, like, the chain is oiled. Everything is, like, your gears are fine. Then you should be good. Like It's, it's oil. It's not even wax. Yeah, it's, it's oil. <laughs> I, am I, planning broke, so <laughs> <laughs> I am planning to go on to wax. So I, my, my three YBN chains just came in today. Wow. Yeah. I, I've been talking on my previous shows. Like, uh, I don't know how you guys find the time to go buy a slow cooker, put the chain in there, go and hang it, have three different chains. Mm. I went to the dark side, man. You know why? Damn. The triggering point was because I've been using the UFO uh, drip. Oh, 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 it's so damn bloody sticky like every time I, I try to get it off I have to pour hot water I spend one hour in the toilet and then my, my wife tells me like we don't even take one hour to bathe and you're taking <laughs> so much time to do all this on your bike oh my god you gotta do what you gotta do marginal gains yeah, yeah, Margin- yeah. <laughs> oh I'm saying that and I'm like <laughs> yeah but I mean okay I, I used Luke before before this whole wax all came into the picture the Shimano racing oil the blue small little one I still find the racing oil or lube much faster. It's so much more smoother, mm. but it picks up a lot of grip yeah. much faster. But of course, I'm no pro compared to you. <laughs> but uh, any thoughts about wax? And uh, why do you, are you still on lube? I know because you say it's more of a budget thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Honestly, like my bike shop has been uh, soft selling me the idea of waxing. Uh, mm. they, they, they're really nice. Like, so they actually offered to to uh, help me wax and stuff like that. Um, but it's a, it's a long process. Uh, so I feel a bit bad. So I haven't also pursued that. But, you know, we'll see. I am very tempted. But definitely there is a lot more maintenance about it. Because, you know, uh, typically in, in terms of my mileage, I would definitely need to change my chain every week. Every week? Yeah, so because the, the, I think the, the lifespan of a wax chain is about 500, 600Ks. And you're doing... Like, my average week is about 600. Yeah, 600, 600. <laughs> so, it's like, it's like, um, you got to change it, like, like every weekend. So, I, I mean, this is, I'm still discussing in my, my bike shop, but probably I would try maybe buy one more chain and then we can have three chains and then we wax each chain and then I'll just change it every, every weekend. And technically, it's the, it's the, the more economical thing to do as well in the long run because your mm. chains just last longer and yeah. you collect less grime and I think it doesn't wear out the other parts yeah, as, yeah. As so fast. you know what you're um, call it uh, incentivizing me to, to get it more <laughs> <laughs> this is poison right here yeah. uh, funny story so when I was uh, trying to get this whole uh, waxing situation ready so I need to buy a uh, slow cooker mm. And then, um, so I was like, okay, I'm probably not, you know, I, I'm not going to buy a $40 brand new one. So everyone's telling me, just go on Carousel, you know, all these people are selling one. So I went and I met up the lady who was selling me for $8, right? Wow. Yeah, yeah. and she was <laughs> like, uh, she asked me the first question, oh, uh, are you going to, you buying this for your baby, is it? You're going to make food for your baby? Uh, I didn't want to tell her that I'm going to be cooking wax in, in the chain image. She probably wouldn't understand what I'm talking about. Say, yeah, 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 for my baby, for my baby. Yeah, my bike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my baby is a bike. Oh my God, yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? So, you, you clocked in about 
Six hundred Ks. Yeah, yeah. A week. Wow. Are there days where you are like, oh, I just don't want to write, man. I, I, I'm sick of this. Of course. I, I don't think it's ever really like I'm sick of it. More like I'm, just, I'm really tired. Um, because, you know, I have, like, I have quite, a, quite big schedules and sometimes I just get, I, sh- I just don't have enough sleep. Mm. Which is honestly like one of the most important things about training. Um, but yeah, so uh, the, the fatigue kind of builds up. And eventually, I'm just like, oh, I, I, I need a rest day. And, and thankfully, like, Wei Liang, who again is my coach, like, he's, he's very accommodative. Like, he starts to understand, like, hey, what's going on. Like, the, if you're so tired, there's no real point to push. Because you're just going to be hindering yourself more mentally and physically. But then after that, I do get a lecture, like, hey, come on, like, you know, you want to train, blah, blah, blah. Like, you got to sleep. Like, you can't be doing this, blah, 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 and everything like that. Which which is perfectly understandable, you know. Like, like he's absolutely right, lah. So... I try to minimize it as much as I can, you know, as, as, I gain, as I've gained more experience over the years, I try and spot when I'm getting more burnt out or I'm getting more tired or, you know, I'm doing, I'm, I'm incurring habits that are just not very healthy for myself, um, be it like mentally and stuff like that. Like, I think over time I had to, I had to really learn how to be, which is something which I guess is kind of corny or cheesy, but it's how to be my own best friend to really support myself and be like my number one supporter and to say like, hey, it's okay, like let's do it again tomorrow and stuff like that and to, to really keep the motivation up and stuff like that because, you know, like um, high performance is um, never, you know, an upwards trajectory, you know, it's always up and down and up and down and I have had my fair share of downs. So I think because of that, I, I do come out like stronger if not physically, like mentally, just to, to understand myself better and understand how to work with the people around me better and how to really try and get the best out of myself and my support system. Would you do this all over again? Um, I think so. Um, I would do it differently to a certain extent. How uh, differently? In terms of a training perspective, um, maybe when I was younger, I would do things slightly differently. Um... Uh, focus on more, you know, focus on, like, as, when I was younger, I think I was a bit too serious. Cause, but like, isn't when, that good? Uh, not when you're nine. La. <laughs> <laughs> not when you're nine. <laughs> like, I think I was, I was, I was racing a lot at the time, but I think I just had a bit too much, like, toxic competitiveness, um, which wasn't good la, at all. Uh, so I, I wasn't really able to have as much fun as I should have been. Um, uh, but yeah, so I, I think I would have changed that. I would just try and focus. Like if I had like any advice for my younger self, like it's just to, like have fun. Like don't worry about it. Like, like it will come. Just you know, just enjoy riding a bike. Don't stress. Maybe uh, when I started properly focusing, which is uh, like 16, 17, I would say like uh, don't go, don't, don't be too hard on yourself. Um, just, just um, how to say, believe in yourself. Uh, try and. You know, don't beat yourself up. Keep yourself motivated. Like, keep talking to yourself. Positive reinforcement again and again and again. And the more positive... To be honest, like, it's not about being, like, idealistic about yourself. Like, if you fail... Example, if you fail a workout set, you fail. Like, that's just the, the fact. So, I like to believe, like, I'm a bit of a realist, you know. Like, what is the matter? Like, what is the situation at the hand? So, example, if I fail, I fail. Okay. But why did I fail? So, I start to analyse, like, oh, maybe I didn't have enough sleep eat wrongly or I'm tired why am I tired blah 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 and start to think about it and say okay now we've understood or even if we haven't really understood it's okay let's just assess the situation we move on tomorrow we try again Hmm. so rather than you know when I was younger I really had the the negative mentality of like come on you know a couple of expletives come out and be like what are you doing like you should be able to do this and everything but you know that's really not the way Hmm. like and I mean I mean I really hope that you know like the younger guys or even like anyone older or whatever who is doing this, like I, I hope that you don't do that because um, it's very negative. La. Be, it, be it in a writing perspective or in a life perspective or in school and stuff like that, I really try and tell my friends, like, look, like you just got to not, like put pressure on yourself, but healthy pressure, you know. Mm. Like you don't want to be, you don't want to start beating yourself up because the only person that you know has your back should be yourself, lah. Mm. You pointed out about diet. Uh, mm. Do you follow a very strict regime of what you eat? Uh, are you counting down calories? Do you need a certain intake of calories? And also, when you go out for rides, mm. what are you drinking and eating? So, um, in terms of a 
like off the bike nutrition, I just try to eat as healthy as I can. So I, obviously, I, I really try and avoid all the fast food and stuff like that. But I mean, I am Malay, so I love my Malay food. Um, <laughs> so it's a bit hard to avoid when you're in a Malay household. Hmm. But if I cook, I, you know, I cook a lot of pasta, a lot of like chicken and stuff like that. I try to be like as clean as I can, nothing too crazy. Um, you know, my, like, uh, we, uh, my coach always tells me, like, look, like, it's more about, obviously, you, you don't, like, uh, pig out on, on, on the food, or on, on the types of food. So, where it's relatively in the ballpark of healthy, but it's more about eating enough, it, eating enough nutritious stuff. So, for example, like, your veggies, your, your protein, and your carbs. So, the, the, when I started with him, like, the, one of my main realizations was, um, oh, I'm actually not eating enough. Like, I actually need to be eating more, obviously more of the right things. But yeah, like he's saying, like, look, you need like X, Y, Z amount of protein. I can't remember right now. It's somewhere in my, my, my notes. Mm. But yeah, and, and you get it from this, 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 this. And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll go and do that. And, and yeah. Um, but on the, on the bike itself, I am also sponsored. I'm sponsored by Simply Active Asia. Um, and I have this pure sports nutrition as my, my carb drink or my electrolyte drink. And my recovery as well. Um, mostly, I just use pure in terms of my gel and stuff like that. Shout out to them, please. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you should really uh, uh, get their stuff. It's really good and very, very tasty. Actually, it's like kind of um, natural. They get it from like natural uh, uh, products and everything. Uh. Mm. Like, like, I. Th- sorry to to plug this a bit, but I think I've had some stomach issues with like other gels as well. Um, I, I won't necessarily name it, but. I've never had an issue with eating pure gels. Never. Like, and it's really, really tasty. Like, I did an Everest when I was 21. So, in 2021. And I had M's uh, cookies, which is their bar. Which is not pure, but, like, it's a bar that Simply Active has. And I had gels. And that's the only thing I ate all night. And I think for, like, my, my I did it in, like, 13 hours or something. Um, so, yeah. Like, it, it, it really works. Like, it's, it's really, really good. Hmm. And, I mean, I've been using it for racing and stuff like that. I've, I've had no problems at all. Right, okay. Uh, one more thing I would like to pick up about this bike before we go into more deeper discussions that you were telling me very interesting is the saddle. Yes. <laughs> I was looking at this saddle. I was like, what the hell is this? And it looks familiar, but uh, I've seen it before, but there's no branding anywhere. Tell us, please. <laughs> um... What's the brand of the saddle again? <laughs> astute. Yes, it's an astute saddle. <laughs> um, it came with a bike, uh, but there was a crash, and um, basically the seat got torn, like the leather got torn. And then in seeing that, my handy dad was like, "Why don't I just reskin that for you? Because it's a really good saddle for me. Like it really fits my pelvic, uh, my pelvic bone, like my width and everything." And I was like, "Sure." And he did it, and oh my god, like it's amazing, like. To be honest, it felt a bit better than when it was because the, the leather is a bit softer and everything and, you know, it's, it's a bit more worn in. So, yeah, like, that's, like, it's how it looks like now. Like, and he redid, he redid it recently for the Sea Games because he was getting a bit, like, worn. And he said, let me just do it for you. And, and he, like, up, upped his game somewhat. Like, he waxed, I think, the front or he epoxied the front or something. And I wow. was like, all right. Like, this looks <laughs> legit, man. It is, man. Right? It looks super legit. Is your dad open for business? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure he's taking all this. Like, if anybody needs uh, to redo sure, their sure, sure. saddle, uh, his yeah, dad I'll, is doing... I'll shut him out. I'll shut yeah. him out. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Okay, cool. Uh, anything else? Okay, let me talk about... Uh, I'd like to ask my, my guests uh, this question. I know you're a bit sponsored, so it might be a bit tough to answer this question, but any dislikes about the bike uh, and any more upgrades that you wish you would have on the bike? Hmm. Uh, I mean, I, I think realistically, the, the most glaring thing is, is about um, the frame. To, so probably having an aero frame would be better. Um, and I think the bars as well. That's the bars. I think that'll be better. Obviously, a bit lighter, whatever is fine. I, it will be good, but yeah, just marginal gains at that point. Yeah, okay. I've got a couple of questions from my followers, or could be your friends, uh, oh, because nice. you reposted the IG story. So let's go with uh, relatively easier questions, mm. I would say. How do Wheel Angels wheels compare to bigger brands like Zip and DT Swiss? Do you think it is worth the money? Again, as a disclaimer, you are sponsored by Wheel yes, Angel. Yes, I am so. sponsored by Wheel Angel. Uh, but yeah, what is your opinion on this? I think, I think obviously, you know, you have, you have pros and cons to everything. 
Um, I think Wheel Angels hold up really well. Uh, I think they have a wide range of hubs as well, which you can choose from. I think D2C, they have this wide industries, they have their own run, I think, still. Hmm. Um, Velo Technic, right? Yeah. Uh, and then, um, uh, so they have a range. I, I think buying it from a local, uh, from a local brand is worth, because you get like really intimate support. I think that's the main thing because you really can go to them and say, hey, I have this problem and stuff like that. You get a direct, very, input. Yeah, a direct input and intimate relationship and I think that's quite priceless. Mm. Uh, Darren Lim, your yes. fellow teammate, I think he is sponsored by Ascend. Yes. Oh, so another local bike uh, yes. <laughs> manufacturer. Talk about Ascend and uh, Wheel Angels, where do they stand next to each other? <laughs> very <laughs> tough question to answer. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Dramatic. <laughs> yeah. Um... Uh, I think both are very reputable brands, you know. I think they both make really good wheels. Um, and uh, I think... Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you should try them both out and see it for yourself. <laughs> okay, good answer. I will not poke any further. <laughs> we can talk about this offline. <laughs> what is the best cycling team in Singapore? Oh, what's the best cycling team in Singapore? Yeah. Singapore national team. Oh! <laughs> okay, if it's not the national team, um, the clubs. Which clubs have you been in? So, actually, I've only been in two teams. So, the first team, which is uh, Team Awano Technology, uh, but that team actually folded. And uh, eventually, uh, some of them also moved to Riyadh's team currently, which is Virgin. Mm. They got a very nice jersey, man. Yeah. The recent photo shoot that they did, wow, that's yes. amazing. And you know who designed that jersey? No. Riyadh. Oh really? Yes. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I remember like um, a short story was that we were riding together, and then he was asking me because we live in Woodlands. Then he was asking me, "Hey, do you know like any place that it's like a like a mama shop under the block?" I said, "I think I know a place." Mm. And then we brought him there. Yeah. And they had coconuts there, and I was like, "Okay." And yeah. Brad and I we just got back from Chiang Mai, and I was like. With their coconuts, I was like, I said, Uncle, can I have a coconut? He said, Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't even have to ask. He offered. He's like, You want coconut? I have a lot. And I was like, All right, sure, I'll have one. <laughs> so, yeah, but yeah, so um, it was a, it's a really nice jersey. I, I commended him a lot for it. Like, I think it was So really, Riyadh is really the nice. brainchild of this. Yes. He, yes. he came up with the idea of the photo shoot as well? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I think he was working with one of his photographer friends as well. Um, and uh, I think they had this idea and, and he just needed some like input lah. so I'm glad to have had like small hand in my in sort of like my old team and yeah. such yeah uh, when I saw that photo shoot uh, on my homepage uh, I was like wow so creative man these yeah, guys man. taking it to a different level so good job guys really really awesome <laughs> um, <clears throat> how do I or how do anyone or does anyone join a team like Matador Allied Oh. Greyhounds to, uh, to be honest Like just ask <laughs> Like uh, Just ask to join for the ride um, Is I, there an expectation Like You need to perform I'm, I, I'm not sure For the other teams I only can speak for Metro um, But for Metro We have like um, Three or four groups Depending on how many Riders are present um, Like there's a group one Which is I'm in And then uh, There's group two Which are some of the, the guys Who maybe want to take it A bit easier uh, group 3 depends on how many people there are But there's also a ladies group But not to say that the ladies are slow The ladies are actually pretty fast hmm. But um, sometimes the, 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 you know, Some of the, the younger guys etc Like join the ladies group and stuff like that So basically like you have, If you have a link maybe, maybe you can DM me as well um, At r <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that, uh, and, and you know we can, I can invite you for the ride And you can just see how it goes and see if you like the crew, see if you want to join the team, or etc. Just, just kind of scope out the situation. Obviously, like we will, uh, I will, like we will ask you, or oh, how's your fitness level, or maybe we'll just like stock a Strava for a bit, uh, just to understand like what's your current fitness level or what we understand about you. Then we will just put you in the teams accordingly and see how it goes from there, lah. So before I join the team, I make sure I will rack up my mileage first. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. <laughs> so Metador Racing, this jersey that you're in is purely only for the racers. No, so. So Metro is an interesting thing because Metro is just like a it's, a, it's a racing team, but it's also a club. So it's just a club of, of people who just love riding and just want to ride together. Uh, but then we also just have a racing team and, you know, um, and, and it's a pretty good racing team. Mm, okay. SRAM or Shimano? SRAM. Reason? For road, because um, 
Oh, okay, obviously, like, you know, everyone's going to say that SRAM is a bit slower and stuff like that, which I do acknowledge. But wireless shifting, like, the name wireless is no wires. Hmm. And I think SRAM, I mean, up until, like, I don't know, two weeks ago when Campy, like, came out with their new wireless shifting, like, this is still the epitome of wireless shifting for me. No cables, no nothing. Just set up, put it like that. Like, it's fine. It's but good. people will say that, oh, your batteries don't last as long as compared to Shimano. Um, but as well, like, ship, like, it's so easy to know whether your batteries are dying. I can't remember for the newest one. But I know that previously, like, you know, you have the junction box and everything. Like, it's so difficult to see. I think I have had less times. I've had a lot of friends who actually had their Shimano die on them. Mm. But then for mine, I've rarely ever had it. I think maybe like once or twice only. And that was when I just started using it. But then over time, it's kind of a habit. I just, when I finish my red, I just click once and I say, oh, it's, it's red. Let me go charge it right now. Um, or, or, you know, worse comes to worse, like um, if I, you know, I'm clumsy and I forget. <laughs> like I, I just change the front battery to the rear battery mm. and I'm good. Like, and in Singapore, it's relatively flat. Like mm. you can get home with a big chaining. Like there's no worries. <laughs> Yeah, and on your cycling computer, what are you looking at? What data are you looking at? Hmm. So my main page, first one is speed. Um, and then after I have power, cadence, uh, distance, uh, time, time of day, uh, and elapsed time. Which is the most important one? Well, on a regular, like, if I'm not training, like, example, if I'm committing, I... I I love I just love I just love the speed mm. And I just like to see how fast you're going. Mm. But obviously like if I'm um if I'm training in itself for intervals or whatever, then I would change it actually to a page which has my watts as my main because I wanna know exactly what it is and stuff mm. like that. Okay. From Riyadh. Oh nice. <laughs> uh, and a couple of people uh, which I will merge to the same question. Nice. Uh, Riyadh says why the orange bar tape? So when you sent me the photo, I posted the one with the orange bar tape. Mm. By the way, he says, why the orange bar tape with the vomiting emoji? Okay, actually, <laughs> I really wanted to have the orange bar tape today. Um, but uh, it was peeling. Like, I think it started peeling only like this past week. So I was like, damn it. Like, <laughs> uh, if only like, I literally like had to change it like in the, in the last two days. Um, but I actually really like the orange bar tape. I know it's pretty controversial. Like, <laughs> like, let's be real. But why the orange one? No, why not yellow? So, simply put, my bike shop had the orange one. And then he said, do you want it? And I was like, yes. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, why not? Like, let's just do it, man. And to be honest, like, I think it's really good. Because you're so bright that at night, and I ride a lot at night. Or like in the dark, late in the morning or whatever. Like, I have this kind of peace of mind that I'm like 90% sure that the, the cars will be able to see me. I'm literally like a reflector on the road. Yeah. Like, and sometimes I'm we literally wearing like a yellow jersey with like bright like rainbow colored <laughs> socks <laughs> and a like yellow bike plus orange. And like it's a bit hard to miss. Yeah. So I'm just going to say it's a safety concern. Mm. Okay. Uh, recently I was reading one comment that someone commented onto my video. He said, can you start asking your guest what shoes they are wearing now and what is the reason for them uh, why did they change to this current pair what was the issues with the previous one if there was any mm. so this is uh, the Shimano RC 7s yeah. yeah well they'll be beat up right now um, but I changed I think from physique something but I simply changed to the, the RC 7 because I wanted a double boa system um, and it was one of the relatively cheaper double boa systems that was available and this was in 2021. I think I bought this in 2021 or something. Um, and uh, yeah, like, because I, I think I, my feet are a bit uh, touchy sometimes. So I, I just want a bit more adjustability in terms of the, the, the middle section. So that's what I did. Mm, okay. How do you balance work, school with cycling? Mm, interesting. Um, I think just try and prioritize as much as I can. Um, it's a really, really difficult uh, task, la. Um, but I think everything comes hand in hand to a certain extent because, you know, like, like, yeah, I train, but then training also gives me a lot of energy. Um, and I think it helps me to keep me through my day. Like, like right now I'm interning and I sometimes I feel like if I'm, if I don't ride in the morning, I feel so lethargic like mm -hmm. the whole day. So, um, I think 
I try to plan as much as I can, try to see what I can fit into my day, try and be as organized as possible, which can be really difficult at times. Uh, but um, so far, I'm making do with my situation and you know, just trying to, trying to do the best that I can. What are you trying to achieve out of, out of this? So you, you are interning, you're you know, obviously planning to go into a corporate life uh, and you've got cycling. Which one do you, you know, you can juggle more? Which one do you, what was the end goal for this? I mean, obviously, like, the the most ideal goal would be to actually be picked up by, like, a, like a trade team. Um, like, uh, be, you know, just to get really, really paid for, for cycling. Uh, and that's definitely what I'm trying to work towards, lah. Uh, you know, just slowly, bit by bit, and see where this goes. Um, but I think that, to me, like, cycling is kind of just, like, my lifestyle right now. Um, it's my schedule, it's what I do. I, I think eventually if my riding doesn't exactly make me money, I'll just try and transition to a position where I would be in a job which does allow me to do so. Like, at least, like, ride or race occasionally. Like, I, to be honest, because, like, right now, I, I, my mentality towards cycling is that I want to be healthy, you know. I want to be fit, I want to be healthy, I love competition. And I think that, that cycling and riding in general is just the, the best way that, or the most fun way that I see to, to channel that competitive energy. Mm. And, um, and uh, I would like to do it as for as long as I can. You know? Realistically speaking, in Asia, where I would say road cycling is not as popular in European countries, right? Uh, you say you're a realist. <laughs> Do you think that it's possible to make decent living being an athlete or being a cyclist? I guess um, decent living is subjective, you know. Um, uh, you know, at my current age, at my current um, commitment levels or my current uh, responsibilities, sure. You know, I can live off like, if I'm getting like, I don't know, like 1.2k or whatever, like per month, like that's good enough for me, you know. Um, but obviously, if I as I as I get older and you know eventually, if I do want to settle down, anything that will change, because you know if I want to buy a house, etc. So that is the realist. Um, I think there is opportunities. Uh, maybe it might not be like the most viable right now. Like, I think this is an important issue uh, because. I think sport in Singapore, like let's be real, isn't exactly the most supported. I think, um, to be honest, like I'm not exactly paid as well to be in the national team and stuff like that. Obviously, we do get some uh, monetary benefit, which I am very grateful for. But to be honest, it's very difficult to maintain that lifestyle. And I believe that I'm in a point of privilege where I am a student. So I have the excuse to say, like, I don't need to work right now. Because I'm a student, I can just focus on studying. And, you know, um, and my parents also have that excuse to say that I'm a student, so they don't mind, like, helping me pay for some stuff and everything, so it's okay, like, and I'm, and I'm very grateful for that. But I think that more needs to be done. What do you think the government can do differently or to support the cycling scene here? Um, I think firstly would be allow for more races. I think... <laughs> which might be controversial to say. Uh, a lot for more races, but also I think just try and... I, it might be changing. I'm, I'm not really sure. Sometimes I feel like it's changing or not, but just try and have a better attitude towards sport. I think sport is still underrated in our community. Um, like, but I think sport does a lot to, to really develop your mind develop your process, like thinking process, your, your determination, etc., etc. you know, your energy levels, like I said just now. So I think that definitely, you know, trying to see sport as a viable option and in doing so, you would ultimately try and fund, uh, to give more monetary support and stuff like that. And that would allow us to, to really do, to really make this all truly worth it. Because like. right now, like, let's be real, like, for all of us, or for almost all of us in the national team, like, it's a passion project. La. Like, we're not exactly uh, being paid to do this. Um, and, but we're doing it because we love the sport, because we, we want to do our best and we want to pursue this as, as best as we can, as far as we can. Um, but I, I got to shout out again to my, my coach, uh, William, because I think that he's really good and he's, he's very forward-thinking in terms of these opportunities and he's been really helping me to, 
to try and think about how I can get more money, how I can fund this. So we have a coaching program in the works in terms of a, of a physical coaching, in terms of technical skills and stuff like that. So stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, robot is coming. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, like like he's he's a big believer in in supporting athletes or at least giving athletes the the opportunity to work for their for their wage. Hmm. Thank you. That's a very good message. Hopefully, people hear 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 you out, and uh, I'm very excited to see what's the new bike coming. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be hanging up on the wall, and then I hope to get you here, and then you'll tell me this is the best bike ever. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Even better than the Factor O2. Okay, next question. How much does your full bike cost? I think um, uh, I'll be fully transparent and say that I didn't have to pay full price for it. Thankfully, thank God, bless. Hmm. Um, um, but I think. Uh, it's about 9.5 to 10k uh, but i've had the price knocked off a lot like you know the wheels are sponsored some of it like i because i bought it over from my previous team so it is a bit cheaper uh than retail so yeah okay a bit over time uh that's all of the questions i have for ig oh, thanks. i just want to point out uh something that very recently just happened by the time people watch this video they would have uh, forgotten so oh, the yeah. incident of what happened in katong what was it? The, the lady who jumped over the car. Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> thoughts, yeah. thoughts about that, thoughts about that. Oh. I don't know, man. Like, I, I don't really believe in, in getting so angry about these things. Um, I think if I was in that situation, I think showing empathy, even on both sides, you know, like, um, as a rider, like, I would be like, come on, man. <laughs> like, I'll be upset, but if you show the, the the more compassion or the more empathy that you show, I think the more that they will soften up. Mm. Like a lot of times, I'm like, I think that a lot of times I just show disappointment. Lah. It's like, come on, like, are you trying to kill me? Yeah, like I'm just trying to get home, man. Like, are you referring to who are you referring to? No, both, no, no, both like, parties. Yeah, lah, like, <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. But I mean, in terms of in terms of accidents in general, you know, like like we. All of us, especially in Singapore or wherever in the world, you know, like if you are if you are riding, you would have your fair share of close encounters, and um, I think that showing compassion or showing empathy is the most important thing, lah. Like, I don't really like to get so angry. I think um, if someone like you know passes me or anything, I just kind of like look like and try and be like, hey, come on, like come on, do better, yeah. do better, like. Just give me a bit of, just give me a bit of space. It's not that hard. Do you think the, the the lady who was driving did not give enough space? I don't know, you know. From the footage, it's a bit hard to tell. Yeah, that's why. But I, to be honest, if things like that happen, I'll just let it go and like, I don't want to come into an altercation. And yeah, because to be honest, <laughs> it's so troublesome. Like, yeah, it's troublesome. The problem for me is troublesome. <laughs> yeah, and look, like, how much energy are you expending, you know? Like, we only have so, so finite energy every day. And like, you know, to get angry, like being angry takes so much energy. It's so <laughs> much easier to just let it go. Yeah. Like, and be like, ah, come on. Like, I just hope that you have a better day. Mm, like, honestly, yeah. uh, like, if the guy, like, if, if, if the lady does it to me, I'll be like, ah. I'll just I'll give a disappointed look. I just go about my and day. just let her pass. Yeah. Because I, like, I think one of my recent close shaves were, were I was, I was riding for, to crazies at Kranji. And um, I was, I was, because I live in Woodlands, I was passing by actually the Woodlands checkpoint. And for whatever reason, it was a green light on our end. And I accelerated quite quickly, you know. And then I just suddenly from the, from the, my left, I heard like tires screeching. And then after I see a car speeding on like along, and it was a red light for him, you know, or her. And then um, I, they, when, when I crossed, they just passed me behind me. And I was like, shit, like, <laughs> damn, that could have been bad. But I mean, I could have stopped. I could have scolded the guy or whatever, but I think they would know. Lah. Yeah. I think they would know that, okay, that's a bit messed up, messed up you know, like, like I, I don't think that I did the right move there and I was like, oh, I'm just going to go about my day. Like, it's yeah. whatever. And I like, thank God. I say thank you so much for, 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 like, yeah, for my life, <laughs> for saving me, for, yeah. for helping me out today. Like, <laughs> oh man. Wow. Uh, yeah, I think it's going a bit crazy. And then you see the comments of these people be like, oh, you know, the lady who, who took her bike, the, 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 the rider's bike away, she had rammed the guy down. There's like so much tension between cyclists and drivers. <laughs> I know. I, to be honest, I think uh, it's a bit of keyboard warrior-ness. Mm. Um, I think that, like I said, like, everyone should just show a bit of empathy. Like, you know, um, maybe, you know, the guy, the, the lady was just having a bad day. Uh, on both ends or whatever like 
I think even online as well, like, we shouldn't be wishing harm on other people. Lah. I, I think that we should just be trying to, trying to be as supportive as possible or, or just maybe try and give a bit of a benefit of the doubt or, or at least just try and be kind. Lah. Like, let's try and not hate. I think there's a, lot of, there's a lot of hate going around, especially for cyclists, and I really hate to see it, you know, because it's... Um, uh, there's a lot where you know where you, sh- you see like maybe some riders not exactly doing the most legal of things or whatever and then the drivers are like oh I wish I was there and I would run them down like come on are you even listening to yourself right now you want to commit murder just because someone is doing this like it's not that deep bro <laughs> like genuinely it's not that deep like like just chill out like it's okay like okay I'm sorry that you know uh, that I might not be doing the best thing but like it's okay I I I affected your day for about two seconds. Uh. <laughs> like you're going to speed off and it's going to be fine. So yeah. just chill out. Yeah. Well said uh, on behalf of uh, all of the cyclists here. Thanks. Uh, anything else before we uh, give it a day, call it a day and I got to film you riding the bike? Um, nothing much. Uh. Thanks for having me here. Thank you so much I for coming. I really love your project going on. <laughs> I love you. your, your <laughs> mask situation, <laughs> sunglasses <laughs> situation. It's awesome. Thank you. Uh, but yeah. Make sure to subscribe yeah. and like and uh, uh, share. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming and a round of applause for our fun. Thanks, man. Awesome. We are done. Thanks. Could be everything she needs if she let me get on it. So come here, baby. Listen close. Hold me tight. Don't let me go. Girl, you know that I want you all my life. But I got so much left to do except for falling in love. So I'ma let you keep me up another time But please don't stay the night Don't try to change my mind